Hello everyone, welcome to Analog Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to talk on frequency modulated signal generation using direct method. Please note, in my previous video, I have already discussed about indirect method of FM signal generation. That video will be a prerequisite for this video. So, I highly recommend you to watch that video first before you continue with this one. You can watch that video by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now or I will leave the link of the same in the video description below. Before I start the direct method of frequency modulated signal generation, let me give a very brief introduction to generation of FM signals itself. There are basically two methods of FM signal generation which are indirect method and direct method. In indirect method, the modulating signal is first used to produce a narrow band frequency modulated signal and then frequency multiplication is performed to increase the frequency deviation to a desired level. Whenever the stability of the carrier frequency is of major concern, we select indirect method of frequency modulated signal generation. On the other hand, in direct method of FM signal generation, the frequency of the carrier is directly varied in accordance with the modulating signal and this can be accomplished using a voltage controlled oscillator. Let us now discuss this direct method of FM signal generation in much detail. As previously said, in direct FM systems, the instantaneous frequency of the carrier wave is directly varied in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal. Please note, the frequency of the carrier is varied in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal. So, how do we achieve this? This can be achieved by using a voltage controlled oscillator which is usually denoted by VCO. So, what is this VCO? A VCO is an electronic oscillator whose oscillation frequency is controlled by the input voltage. Now, if you come back to the definition of direct FM which is given in the first point here, if you read it out, it says the carrier frequency is varied with respect to the amplitude of the message signal. Now, come to the third point and read out a VCO is an electronic oscillator whose oscillation frequency is varied by using the input voltage. So, the definitions of direct FM and VCO kind of a match. Therefore, I can use a VCO to generate frequency modulated signals using direct FM systems. It must be noted that in direct FM systems, the applied input voltage determines the instantaneous oscillation frequency which is given by F i of t. So, we can finally say that a VCO can be used for both frequency modulation as well as phase modulation by applying a modulating signal as the input signal. Let us now move on and discuss about how to construct a voltage controlled oscillator. A VCO can be constructed by using resonating elements. An example would be a simple LC combination. What is the characteristic of this LC network? It must be a highly resonant network and we make the LC network a resonant network by making the capacitor to change its value in accordance with the input modulating signal. Please note, a VCO is constructed using resonating elements such as a simple LC combination and the LC network must be a highly resonant network and we attain this resonant network by making the capacitor to change its value as per the input modulating signal. We can make the capacitance of the LC network to change by using a fixed capacitor in parallel with a voltage variable capacitor which is called as a varactor. This combination of a inductor parallel with a fixed capacitor parallel with a varactor 
creates a frequency selective network which means I can define what is the value of the instantaneous oscillation frequency. Now, what is a varactor diode? A varactor diode is a type of a diode that is commonly operated in reverse bias condition. And in reverse bias condition, the internal capacitance of the varactor diode varies with respect to the applied reverse voltage. Therefore, since in a reverse biased condition the depletion region does exist, this creates what is called as a variable capacitance effect. So, when I come back to my resonant circuit, I have inductor, fixed capacitor and variable capacitor. An important characteristic of the varactor diode is that the larger the reverse voltage applied to this diode, the smaller will be its transition capacitance. Right. That is about a brief discussion on constructing a voltage controlled oscillator. Moving on, for this discussion, let us consider a Hartley oscillator as shown in figure 1 here. Please note, what we have shown is not completely the oscillator circuit. This is only a tank circuit. As previously said, the resonant circuit consists of inductor, then a fixed capacitor which is this one and then we have a variable capacitor which is a varactor. The input to the outlay oscillator is V of t which is the modulating signal. Coming to the operation of this circuit. The frequency of oscillation that is produced by this tank circuit is given by F i of t equals 1 divided by 2 pi into root L c, but we have two inductors here. So, it will be square root of L 1 plus L 2 multiplied by the overall capacitance value, but now if you look at the varactor the value of the capacitance across the varactor changes as per input modulating signal V of t. Now, since input modulating signal is a function of time, when I write the value of capacitance here in the equation for F i of t, I will write it as C of t. Why do I write it as C of t? Because the overall capacitance is a function of time. If I am asked to write what is C of t? C of t will be simply equal to the fixed capacitance C naught plus the variable capacitance across the varactor which I will write it as C of V of t. So, the inductors L 1, L 2, the fixed capacitor C naught and the varactor which is here considered as a variable capacitor, they form the frequency determining network. Right. I have given the same points what I just discussed on Hartley oscillator. The frequency of oscillation created by the tank circuit is given here which I have written previously and the overall capacitance is C of t equals fixed capacitance C naught plus the value of the capacitor across the varactor which is also a function of the input voltage. So, this is the voltage across the varactor diode whereas this is the fixed capacitance. Let us now consider a modulating signal in the form of V of t equals A m cos 2 pi F m t. Now, we have previously written the equation for the total capacitance C of t which is equal to C naught plus C of V of t which is the voltage across the variable capacitor. So, let us now substitute V of t into this equation. So, that will become C naught plus C of a m into cos 2 pi f m t which reduces to C naught plus C m into cos 2 pi f m t where C naught as shown below here is the total capacitance in the absence of modulation and C m is the maximum change in the total capacitance. Now, I will substitute this equation which is for C of t back into the equation for instantaneous frequency of oscillation which is equation 1 here. This substitution is shown in this part of the equation. 
So, f i of t equals 1 divided by 2 pi square root of L 1 plus L 2 and this complete term is taken from our previous equation which represents c of t. Moving on in the next step what I am going to do is I am going to take c naught as common as shown here. So, when I take c naught as common what remains inside the bracket is 1 which is shown here plus c m by c naught into cos 2 pi f m t. Now, in the next step I am going to split the RHS into two separate parts. In the first part I am going to write 1 by 2 pi square root of L 1 plus L 2 into C naught. In the second part I will write the remaining thing which is 1 divided by square root of 1 plus C m by C naught cos 2 pi F m t. Now, I am going to assume this complete value which is the first term across the RHS as F naught and then I have taken the second term as it is and shown here. Lastly, I am going to take this content which is in the denominator to the numerator. So, it will become F naught into 1 plus C m by C naught cos 2 pi F m t whole to the power minus 1 by 2. Please note we have taken the square root content in the denominator to the numerator. So, the power becomes minus 1 by 2. This is the expression for instantaneous frequency of oscillation. Let us now specify what is F naught exclusively. This is shown here. F naught is said to be the unmodulated frequency of oscillation and is given by 1 by 2 pi square root of L 1 plus L 2 C naught. Let us now recall the binomial theorem given by 1 plus x whole to the power minus 1 by 2 is approximately equal to 1 minus of 1 by 2 into x if and only if the magnitude of x is considerably lesser than 1. Now, I am going to use this equation which is the binomial theorem into the previous equation which is for the f i of t. Because if I look at the contents that are placed inside the bracket, it is in the form of 1 plus x whole to the power minus 1 by 2. Now, if the value of this particular function which is c m by c naught is considerably lesser than 1, then I can apply the binomial theorem to the RHS of this equation. So, we can therefore say if the magnitude of c m by c naught is much lesser than 1, we can use the binomial theorem to reduce the RHS of the f i of t equation as f naught, please look at the RHS here, 1 minus of 1 by 2 into x. So, it is 1 minus of 1 divided by 2 into what is x? This part is x which is c m by c naught cos 2 pi f m t. So, that is written here. So, we have now reduced the equation for instantaneous frequency of oscillation by the Hartley oscillator by using the binomial theorem. In the next step, let us assume minus C m by 2 C naught is equal to delta f divided by f naught. If I do that, then equation 8 which is for f i of t reduces to f naught into 1 plus delta f divided by f naught cos 2 pi f m t. Let us now take this f naught inside the bracket. So, it will be f naught plus f naught into delta f divided by f naught then cos 2 pi f m t. f naught here and here gets cancelled. So, the instantaneous frequency of oscillation is f i of t equals f naught plus delta f into cos 2 pi f m t. This equation shown by equation 9 is the desired equation for instantaneous frequency of the frequency modulated wave. However, we must note that the FM wave thus generated using the technique what we discussed till now will not generate a wide band signal. That is, this expression what we have obtained here creates a narrow band frequency modulated signal. Therefore, we have to now perform another operation to convert this narrow band FM to wide band FM. And this is generally done using direct method by using 
frequency multipliers and mixers. In figure 2, we have shown a system to convert the narrow band frequency modulated signal generated at the output of the oscillator to a wide band frequency modulated signal. If you come to the input, we have m of t which is our modulating signal. The output of VCO is the narrow band frequency modulated signal. Now, we want to convert this narrow band frequency modulated signal into a wide band frequency modulated signal and therefore, we will be using frequency multipliers followed by mixers. What is crucial in this circuit to note is the use of a fixed oscillator. Please note this is not a crystal oscillator. This is the basic difference between indirect method of frequency modulated signal generation and the direct method. The overall operation here is pretty simple. Now, when I go for a frequency multiplier, what it consists of is a non-linear device followed by a band pass filter. The input to the non-linear device, it should be noted, is the narrow band frequency modulated signal and the output what is expected is wide band frequency modulated signal. So, the input is a signal with frequency fc and the band pass filter has a mid band frequency of n fc. Therefore, if I denote the narrow band signal as s of t, then the wide band signal can be represented by s dash of t and the frequency of wide band fm signal will be n fc. In a very similar fashion, if I consider the modulation index of nbfm as beta, then the modulation index of wide band frequency modulation will be n beta. So, the figure 2 what is shown here is a system of generating wide band frequency modulated signals using direct method. Let us now briefly compare and contrast the WBFM signals that are generated by indirect method as well as direct method. Please note, I have discussed indirect method of frequency modulated signal generation in my previous video. Now, if I talk about the frequency deviation, the frequency deviation generated by the direct method is considerably large. Therefore, if I have to perform frequency multiplication, the value of the multiplication factor which is n1 is considerably lesser in direct modulation. This is considered one of the major advantages of direct modulation over indirect modulation. However, the problem comes in the form of frequency stability. Particularly for direct method of frequency modulated signal generation, the frequency stability of the carrier is considerably low. The main reason behind this is the use of the fixed oscillator whereas an indirect method of frequency modulated signal generation uses a crystal oscillator. So, if I use the system that is shown in figure 2 here to create the WBFM wave, then the WBFM wave will not be stable. So, let us now discuss on what can be done on converting this system into a system that generates stabilized signal. An arrangement for such a system is shown in figure 3 here. Please note, this is a system for generating wide band frequency modulated waves, but with frequency stabilization introduced. If you look at the circuit carefully, you will note that at the input you have modulating signal, which is then given to a voltage controlled oscillator. The output of the voltage controlled oscillator is a narrow band frequency modulated signal which is then given to a frequency multiplier to convert it into a wide band frequency modulated signal. So, the difference between the previous diagram and this diagram comes in the form of the feedback loop that is shown here. Please note for this system we have considered crystal oscillator to generate the carrier. Let us now briefly discuss how this system works. I am going to start with the mixer here. 
you should note very similar to a frequency multiplier a mixer consists of a non-linear device followed by a band pass filter the overall idea behind the mixer is the band pass filter passes only the difference between the two inputs to the mixer so you can say the output of the mixer is the difference signal this difference signal is then fed to a frequency discriminator that will create an instantaneous amplitude signal and the amplitude of this signal is proportional to the input to the frequency discriminator which is the difference signal so the output of the discriminator is the amplitude signal this amplitude signal that is at the output of the frequency discriminator is then low pass filter and is then applied to the voltage controlled oscillator what is important to note down here is whether there is a difference signal generated or not if there is no difference between the frequency of the wbfm signal which is fc as well as the frequency of the crystal oscillator frequency which is also denoted by fc then the difference signal value will be zero if that is the case then the frequency discriminator does not create any amplitude signal and therefore the low pass filter output will be equal to zero on the other hand if by some means the wbfm signal carrier frequency either increases or decreases then the output of the mixer will be either a positive signal or a negative signal depending upon this the frequency discriminator creates a positive amplitude or a negative amplitude this positive or negative amplitude signal is then passed through the low pass filter and that will appear as the second input to the vco if the amplitude signal is let us say positive then it will get added to m of t and therefore vco will now work for m of t plus the amplitude signal at the output of the discriminator in a very similar fashion if the amplitude signal generated is negative then it will be m of t minus of the amplitude of the frequency discriminator output so what we have now done is depending upon the variation across fc we have now created another input to the vco which nullifies the previous effect that is if the wbm signal carrier frequency which is fc increases then the feedback path creates an error signal which acts as a negative signal so the voltage controlled oscillator now has m of t plus the negative signal which is the second input to the vco as a result there is a decrease in the value of input to the vco in a very similar fashion if the carrier frequency at the wbm signal decreases then the feedback path creates a positive signal as second input to the vco so now the input to the vco is m of t plus positive signal therefore the input to the vco increases now we know that a vco creates oscillations depending upon the value of input signal if the input to the vco increases then the frequency of oscillation increases if the input to the vco decreases then the frequency of oscillation decreases now if you look at this carefully i first analyze the condition where the fc across the wbfm output increased when such is the case after feedback you will note the fc across the output has decreased so we have now compensated for that increase in carrier frequency by providing a feedback path in a very similar fashion when i was analyzing if the value of the fc decreases then after feedback we find the value of fc increases therefore we can finally conclude that the system shown here in figure 3 indeed generates a wideband frequency modulated signal with frequency stabilization that is the carrier frequency generated at the output of the system is always constant right with that we have now come to the end of this discussion on generation of frequency modulated signals 
using direct method. If you found this video to be informative, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on analog communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.